All right, guys, welcome to Wide Awake News Radio. Charlie McGrath, your host, and maybe Reginald from Dimcat, maybe an agent, Sal Buche, maybe Gary Hindershot, maybe Doug Owen, who's sitting in uh, the chat room right now because I was talking to him before, uh, before the program. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're, we're having uh, uh, some connection issues, and I'm not even, it might even be my fault. We're experiencing um, a massive, massive windstorm here, and we have for about the last, uh, uh, let's see, I, I'm going to say it kicked off at about two in the morning. Gary, what's going on? I just have my head. <laughs> I got half my head on just the TV. Uh, yeah, fix that, will you? Come on, you're a professional. He's not going to say anything. All right, uh, uh, so if you're listening, uh, first of all, we, uh, we've, we're we experiencing this massive, massive, blew down a fence, uh, a fence at my house. Uh, shingles are uh, uh, flying all over. The, I mean, it's not obviously anything near the tornado devastation we're seeing uh, recently, but for Montana, in the middle of the mountains, it's pretty dang bad. So uh, I sent a message to Todd Waite, uh, who is uh, producing the program right now at the Rin Studio. And Todd, I'm going to say it on air. Please be ready, man, because I, I don't know. I've lost power four times in the last, uh, in about the last half a day. The longest one was uh, about 30 minutes, uh, and uh, it could happen again. I see Reginald. Uh, well, I hope on, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it doesn't either, but uh, it's, it's happened quite a few times. I almost, I almost called the program uh, tonight because of it, but... Uh, being as I have so few left uh, in the current format that, uh, that I don't I don't want to miss any. Okay, originally we were scheduled to have um, Adrian Salbuche. I don't know uh, what's exactly going on there. I haven't talked to Karen yet, but I see Reginald waiting in the wings, and I told him uh, when we were connected before the program, I'm so happy that, that he's coming on because uh, he's been a fixture on the program uh, forever, and uh, we're getting him back on before we, we switch to the new format. And, Reg, I don't even know if you know. Um, oh, I do. I saw it on on, on on YouTube. You're talking about the new format. It's going to be an hour uh, a day, and it's going to yep. be a lot of new hosts. You're going to be on yep. Tuesday, I think, or was it Thursday? No, no. I'm going to be. I'm going to do an, a news hour every Tuesday, okay. uh, and then we'll have we'll have uh, hosts, uh, uh, regular hosts, uh, Monday through Friday, and a lot of the folks that are already on uh, Wide Awake News. I mean, so basically, the the time the time constraint uh, or the time frame of the program will be reduced by half. We're going from two hours to one yeah. hour. Uh, personally, myself, I, I mean, I, I'm the one who uh, is gaining the most amount of time because I'm going from uh, the current format to, to one news hour uh, a week. Uh, still, there's going to be, I mean, as as I'm sure you're aware, because you put out videos almost every day, um, you know, th there's plenty of content to still uh, to still get out there. So, oh, yeah. Um, let me make this announcement uh, because, and, and, and I have the actual... Uh, article or actual email a listener sent me today we started bonnie and i uh launched uh, uh last night this uh this drive to help uh, sparked by a listener who called uh the day of the the tornadoes in oklahoma and uh at wideawakenews.com right now you, you'll see a flash and red banner at the top of the screen uh it's it's our we're trying to help uh gain some kind of support uh for the folks that have been affected uh, especially uh, uh, the, uh, the the gentleman who called in and he's blind and and uh, he's in in the middle uh, legally blind and he's in the middle of all this carnage and and uh, just just a real real uh, real desperate situation and the response from you guys has been it's been amazing donations and people uh, 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 offering all kinds of assistance other than monetary and monetary um, and what we've done is set up a page for it um i put some art up there that that and, and a lot of you don't know that because i rarely talk about it i paint for relaxation I, I have for a long time it's mostly abstract stuff but uh, some contemporary stuff and i i had uh, a half a dozen or so that uh, that i've recently done and i put them up and i'm giving away now these you know i have them up there i think for 100 i think bonnie put them up for 150 a pop um, I have sold them in the past. Uh, some of them is as high as a thousand bucks, but um, oh, wow, know, it, that's it, <laughs> it, thanks, Reggie. Uh, but it's it's not it's not about money. I don't do it for money, and I'm not keeping any of this money. If you buy one of these paintings, uh, every penny of it, 150 bucks, is going to uh, it's going down to Oklahoma. Now, on, on that note, um, I had a, a listener uh, send me uh, send a donation in and asked. Where is it going to go to? And we are we are looking and talking to uh, several local 
uh, charities down there uh, that, uh, and we're trying to get the, the feel for the best, uh, the best use of your money. If you send 25 bucks, if you send five bucks, I don't want a buck going to some administrator and four going, uh, you know, to, to, uh, to the relief effort. If that means we're giving it to a church, it's going to a church. Whoever's the most effective, whoever can help the people that are, are displaced and affected the most, uh, and cut through a bunch of bureaucracy, that's what we're going to use. Now, if you, if you've given a dime, a penny, a nickel, a thousand dollars, whatever. If you've given anything, it will be 100% tracked on Wide Awake News. Your initials will be there. The amount you donate will be there. The date that it was uh, 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 given to us will be there. The date that that money was distributed to the charity uh, that we picked will be distributed. So it's going to be absolutely 100% transparent. So I want people to understand that uh, this isn't even uh, in consideration that Wide Awake News myself, Bonnie, or anybody else is going to profit from this because we're absolutely not. All right, that's enough about that. Go to wideawakenews.com. Click on the banner at the top if you want to support. If you don't like the paintings, hey, look, I understand. Art is, uh, art is a, a pickle. Yeah, it's very subjective. And uh, some people love them. Some people hate them. That's cool. I don't do it for anybody but myself. But if you like them, buy one. If you don't and you want to still help, uh, do whatever you can do. I don't care if it's a dollar, five dollars, whatever. Uh, do what you can do, and uh, we will... Uh, oh, that was the other thing. We're going to disperse funds every, once a week. Disperse funds once a week. Whatever we build up during the week, we'll kick out and we'll put out a report of what went where and to who. All right. So donate if you can. Uh, if nothing else, you, you know, pray for these folks because they're they're it's scrubbed, Reginald. It's scrubbed. The the F five uh, took it took the grass took the dirt. I mean, it's taken right down to the bedrock. Just absolute uh, uh, sheer devastation. Like a, a nuke went off down there. I heard it was uh, EF4, but yeah, yeah it was one of the most powerful ones they've ever had. You know, I'm hearing all, all, I actually saw the video, and it was absolutely tremendous. I yeah. mean, it, it, you look at that. Let me people, ask you: How can people actually survive something like that? Well, you don't. If you're in the if you're in the path of 200 mile an hour wind, you're dead. Period. I mean, you might as well get hit by a semi. You're not surviving that. Uh, you know, and of course, unless you're in a shelter, uh, but if you're out in the open, uh, you might as well jump out of an airplane. You're not going to survive. And, I've uh, been, yeah, I've always been concerned about tornadoes because I'm from Flint, Michigan, of course. And you know, do, they get, do you get a lot of them there? No. We had one that mattered. We had the tornado of 1953. Look it up. Beecher in Flint, Michigan. It was the deadliest tornado in American history. Are you kidding? I mean, how could I not hear or heard of that? It sounds crazy. Flint, yeah. Michigan. Why would, why, we don't get tornadoes in Flint, Michigan. However, you know, somebody told me about it. I was like, what? And uh, for me, I was always concerned about tornadoes in general. That's why I always wanted to be in an area where I was, at, at least I had a house that had some type of basement. That's always yeah. been important to me. I always want to have some type of basement, although that won't guarantee your survival because... Uh, You're I'll better be, off there than, than yeah. up above. In a trailer. That's always that's something that always turned me off. About yeah. I forget about the status and, and things like that. Yeah, I, I've always been concerned about tornadoes. But yeah, the Flint tornado. It's the Flint Beach tornado. It was in 1953. I'm looking it up. Go ahead. It was, it, it was, I think it's pretty much the deadliest tornado in American history. And if you actually look at a, I don't know if it was an F5 or F4, but more people they lost. A, in that area, in Genesee County alone, 116 people in 1953. Oh, I knew it was I knew it was somewhere around 110. It was around, it was 116 people lost their lives in Genesee County alone because of that tornado system. It was in the beach, as in as in uh, D E E C H E R. All I gotta do is type up Flint and tornado. That's all you really need to do. 1953 Flint tornado. It is the deadliest. Well, they say it's among the deadliest in American history. Yeah, I, can't, I can't imagine many being more deadly. It, it says uh, officially it's one of the most deadliest. But well, it look says up, right here, Oklahoma tornado stirs memories, a 1953 Beecher tornado, and I'm looking at pictures here of another scrubbed landscape. I, I can't think of any tornado sequence that even came close to Flint. I mean, they may have, I know people have died in tornadoes, obviously, but uh, when it comes to tornadoes and, and actual fatalities, I can't think of anything that comes anywhere near that. I mean, actually, when you look at different sources, it's, 
it, it looks like the death toll is actually higher, but it was at least 116 people lost their lives. And it's actually part of a system that actually wiped up, actually killed 243 people because it, it's been, it was a system, part of a major storm system that also in 1953. And this was June, around June 8th and June 9th, 1953. So hundreds wow. of people lost their lives around that time. So... Uh, and you know what? Until until uh, Dimcat came on the program, I didn't even know that that uh, that natural disaster occurred. And 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 I have some kind of uh, some kind of thing. You know, I, I I know the history of natural disasters, and I don't know if it's some kind of sick. Uh, uh, you know, look, looking into these things, but I I, I always have, I've, and I've never heard of that one, so it's very interesting. We'll be back with Dimcat. More wide awake news radio. Hang tight. We we have we we don't have. Ah, there's uh, the music. Yeah, it was a long one, right? Welcome back to Wide Awake News Radio. Charlie McGrath uh, joined by my friend Reginald, also known as Dimcad from YouTube. I, the last time I looked, Reg, you were, what, 30,000 subscribers. You're a machine. You've been there forever, and you put out real original content. I can't express that enough because there, there's a lot of garbage out there, and uh, yours has been consistent. I, I hate to say that. You know, that sounds bitter, right? But there's a lot of garbage out there. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah I, and, I know and, exactly what you mean. Yeah, you know, and there's a lot of people that copy D- Dimcad. There's a lot. You know, and that's what I'm talking about. I mean, you've been doing this longer than me. You've been uh, uh, just consistent over and over and over again. Uh, I don't even. What are you? Fifteen hundred videos up there now. Two thousand videos. What do you got? I have no idea. I lost track. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. And it's, every one of them is is thought out, and every one of them is informative, and some of them are damn funny. <laughs> uh, over the years. <laughs> Funny uh, videos, especially since it's supposed to be Comedy Week on YouTube. But I should also mention that the deadliest tornado is yes, a correct one. The deadliest tornado was a tri-state one in Missouri, Illinois, Indiana. I don't know if this was a series of tornadoes, but it was March 18th, 1925. A lot of, yeah, they, we, we, they lost about 700 people. 695 people were killed in that tornado sequence in 1925. Wow. what? Six hundred and ninety-five. Oh, I guess it must have been more than one. It must have been more than one. But in that sequence, well, yeah, it has to be a sequence. Yeah, that's that's you'd have to hit uh, in a downtown major, you know, major city uh, to to get that kind of death toll. And it and it's not about you know it, it isn't about as much death toll to me anyway. I mean, yeah, they, they, there was a bunch of kids that died in this one, and that's horrific. Um, and it's just the, the absolute uh, uh, the going from modern civilization to absolute stone age overnight and it's you know i can't imagine a more terrifying uh scenario you know i i, I could i guess you know you think about katrina you think about sandy you think about other natural disasters it's it's one of those natural disasters to me are they're just so painful because they're really that you could be a prepper and i hope there's a bunch of preppers that you know that uh uh, or people that had taken advantage of the opportunity to prep before this thing hit, uh, because they're absolutely uh, uh, using their their uh, preparedness now. But uh, um, it, it isn't about death toll. It's about absolute shock. You know, this absolute shock that is not the fault of anybody, right? You're just you just happened to be there. The the the, uh, the shotgun went off, and and you were square in the bullseye. Um, and you know, it, it's. How do you prepare for that? I mean, how do you anticipate that? And uh, uh, and as of late, as of the last several years, I think when these things occur, the first thing that, that comes into my mind is the ineffectiveness of uh, of response. You know, it's all for show. It's all for TV. Helicopters flying around, guys in FEMA jackets looking good. But then you hear the stories of, you know, the, the abuse and, and the lack of help, people that really need it. Um, and, you know, it's one reason why uh, we decided to get involved, that and... Uh, the gentleman who called in and, and literally broke my heart. Uh, Reg, I know I'm dominating this segment, but I need to announce this. Uh, and like I said, I'm just going to do initials. KW, you know who you are. Uh, during the last segment, donated $100 uh, to the more Oklahoma disaster relief at wideawakenews.com. KW, thank you very, very much. Uh, I, I appreciate that. And the folks who donated over the last day, I don't have your names or your initials in front of me. Uh, but uh, I, I will definitely make sure that uh, that you are recognized for your for your uh, contribution and your effort. And uh, anybody who donates during the program tonight, I'll, I'll mention it on the air. I got it's beating to me right now. So KW, thank you very much for the hundred dollar donation. Uh, it's it's going to go to a very good cause. 
All right, uh, Reg, let me look at the clock here. We have about a minute or so left uh, in this segment. Uh, do you, have you heard, because uh, I have, I've gotten emails already, that this, and I don't, I don't know how to take it. I'm not even really thinking about it right now, but they're, they're you know, this whole, uh, it's a false flag event. And I, I just, I don't get it, man. I, I know there's HARP. I know there's weather modification. Yeah, I've heard of HARP, but uh, no, I haven't really heard a lot about a, a theory about that. I'm sorry, yeah. continue. <laughs> I like the look in your eyes right now. And and I said Dex was on last night and he and he brought it up. I love Dex, man. He's a friend of mine. But I just I don't get it. I don't I don't understand and, and somebody in the chat I'm sure is going to be uh you know questioning or say, trying to point out to me how they could do this or or whatever and this is definitely a false flag. But it it just seems uh it seems impossible. I didn't say it, I didn't say it was impossible. I mean, I guess it, it is impossible to me. With harp, I mean, you you can influence the weather. Yeah, I agree. You could definitely influence the weather with harp, and or you can take advantage of conditions for a tornado and actually enhance the likelihood of bigger tornadoes happening. I can imagine technology like that with harp. You know, uh, you know, some people may say that this was done to sort of distract people from the Obama scandals or whatever. I, I can see where, why people, some people would think that, but the way I look at things, I have to have evidence to yeah. really. Even start talking about it. I don't just. We'll talk about this when we come back from this next break. It diminishes, in my opinion, it diminishes uh, arguments if everything turns into, you know, I've had wind for 24 hours. This is a damn conspiracy. They want to keep me off the air or whatever. They want to keep me talking about something other than what's going on in the news. We're going to be back with Reginald, also known as Dimcat, and more Wide Awake News Radio. Please hang tight. All right, guys, welcome back to Wide Awake News Radio. I need to make another announcement because we had, uh, during the break, another donation. I'm, I'm trying to get the, uh, the initials here, so I don't, uh, I don't want to blurt out names. Uh, I want to thank, wait for it, BR. BR, 20 bucks. Thank you very much, BR. I appreciate that. And, uh, again, this money is, uh, is going to go uh, to a very soon named uh, uh, worthy uh, charity down there that, that is Bonnie right now is uh, working, uh, talking with uh, different charities to find out, you know, to make sure that every penny that we send them um, is going to help, uh, going to help these people that are, that are devastated. Uh, Gary brought up a good point during the break, uh, Reg, about how on earth do you, do you prep? I mean, you, you are a prepper. You're, in my opinion, one of the original, um, how, you know, tornado. And, and we were talking a little bit about, I guess you have to pick your, your uh, geography, where you're at, and and do so accordingly, and and let's tie that into everything's a conspiracy somehow, um, you know, because if you get if you get locked into it's harp or it's uh, new world order, which I, both of those things are real. However, I, I don't think that uh, if if you focus solely on the blue helmets, then you're going to miss the boat on something like a natural disaster. It's about being well-rounded and, and taking consideration of all things that could uh, be coming down the road. But Gary makes a point that, you know, there's some things that you're, it's an act of God. You know, a comet's going to hit you. Uh, a F4 or 5 tornado is going to come through. Uh, yeah, you can, you can prepare for it. But even the best preparation, if it happens at 4 o'clock in the morning and you're laying in your bed on the second floor of a stick frame home, you're going to die. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I, if I were to do a class in Oklahoma, I would definitely consider a container or some type of underground bunker or something, because because of tornadoes, it, it would fit well with the whole prepping lifestyle anyway. But yeah, a lot of middle class people they can afford the two thousand dollars for the or the three thousand dollars for the shipping container, so it's a real option for them, and they can have it buried and can definitely provide them with some real protection if something big really did uh, come along. I I don't know if a tornado is going to rip something that big out of the ground. No way. Uh, no. <laughs> I know. There's no way. There's no way if you're if you're buried uh, a couple feet underground. There's no tornado coming that's gonna, uh, you know, they'll they'll take they'll take the earth. To, I mean, they'll take structure, trees, nature, everything right to the ground. But yeah. you know, it's it's, it's certainly not gonna uh, scrub uh, scrub uh, that deep into the ground. And uh, I was telling Reggie during the break that you know I've worked around containers for for years. It, holy cow! Something just slammed into my wall. I told everybody we're having a windstorm here. And somebody's picnic table just just bashed into the side of, of my studio office wall. I don't know how much longer the program's going tonight. Um, <laughs> I gotta go get my container. 
um, listen, we, we do have them, and I've, I've thought long and hard about building one out. You know, um, we, have them, uh, we have empty ones that we'd use for storage on occasion because you can lock them up and it doesn't have to be in a fence and good luck trying to get into them. You're not gonna. Um, and so we put product in there on occasion, lock it up, but it, it would be so simple to make some kind of a little livable structure. And I'm talking, I'm not talking these ones you look up online and you're looking at a hundred thousand dollars for room for two or three people. I, I'm talking, yeah. you know, $5,000 in, in putting into one of these, you could, uh, uh, you could tr- trick it out if you will. Uh, to have uh, some water and and a place to to crash and a place to retreat to, if nothing else. Yeah, it's, it's not- definitely a possibility. And, Let's build uh, one in Flint. Let's go. <laughs> Shoot, it, it was it, once I had the money. I mean, why not? Especially if I had my own property. I mean, why not? You know, I don't have my own property, so that that would be a bit tricky. I would definitely like to have my own uh, property and then try something like that. I, w- I wonder why more people don't even try to have like underground homes or whatever. Yeah, it would be a lot cheaper, to, especially when you're paying taxes. So, I, 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 in, I, I took a trip to uh, Payson, Arizona here, uh, maybe two years ago. And you land in Phoenix, you drive to Payson. It's quite a ways, but you go through the desert. Some of the most beautiful country, uh, some of the most beautiful scenery in our country. And I come from Montana. But uh, it was it is so unbelievably hot that uh, I, I was thinking the same thing. If I lived here, it would be in the side of the hill uh, because you know you, you would uh, you'd be able to maintain cool in the in the summer and heat in the winter. And that, that yeah, was- yeah, that's one. That's another thing I've been thinking about because it, it, it doesn't matter how cold it gets or how hot it gets. You know, you go right into your basement, you can actually survive down there. It's, it's it's easier to sort of survive with even if you have extreme temperature swings. So I, I, I used to know. You... I used to know the the, the formula. Uh, I believe it's. Uh, I, I'm going to screw up the footage here. Somebody in chat knows this for sure. You can look it up. I believe it's it's six feet underground. Just... You're you're about 68 degrees all year long, all year long. It doesn't matter if you're dead of winter or. Uh, I, mean, I might be off on the degrees in the footage, but you get a little bit under the earth. Every, you know, your whole entire climate is more stable. And, uh, you know, it's certainly <clears throat> puts you in a survivable situation, cold or hot. I want to get into, I, I want to get off the, the prepper thing for, for a minute. Because yeah. I, there's, there is, since you're on here and you are, uh, in, in my opinion, you know, one of the, the independent media, uh, be, you know, the guys who uh, kicked it off. Uh, is that, yeah, it's a good term, independent media, because he was reporting, uh, you know, commentary as you saw it. And this is, when did you start? 2007? 2006? 2007? Uh, it was actually 2008. And uh, it was sort of a casual thing, but I've been on YouTube longer. But I actually started to do videos in 2008. That's really yeah. when I really started to uh, get into YouTube and actually doing the videos. And it's kind of funny because for most of my life, I've been pretty shy, camera shy. I never wanted to take any photos at school, never really liked having pictures of myself. Always resisted it and never really liked it. Really, twenty million it, views uh, later. <laughs> yeah, I never really liked that type of exposure. But here I am now, broadcasting myself all over the world, and it's 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 funny how you can sort of change your mind about things and how you can make decisions and actually reveal certain things about yourself that you didn't. Do you, even you think? Do you think it's made you? Uh, I, the topic I'm going to get, and we'll get in the in the last segment, is the clampdown on free speech, and I'm going to ask you about that because I think independent media is going to be targeted. But you brought up a good point. We have three minutes left in this segment. You know, you you talk about you're shy, and you talk about uh, that that you had no intention of suddenly uh, being a YouTube sensation, and you know, you get to the millions of views level like you have, uh, you're. I mean, there's no other way to describe that. People know who you are. It really does. It really does change your perspective, doesn't it? As far as uh, am, am I willing to stand up and say something in 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 my real life? You know, it changes your perspective on your ability to speak, on your ability to speak out, and and what's important. At least that's been my my uh, my take on it. I'm certainly not the same person publicly uh, that I was a, a few years ago. How about you? Oh, yes, I definitely agree. It's easier to uh, step up and say what you're thinking, whereas before I may have been a bit shy, I may have been a bit uh, tentative, 
But now I realize that, hey, you know, I'm already out there and I have a voice and there's nothing wrong with voicing your opinion because a lot of times people are sort of conditioned to sort of be quiet and just go along with whatever they're being told. But the people telling you to just be quiet and go along with whatever you're being told, they're not acting in your best interest. You know, they're, 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 they're trying to get condition you to uh, think in a certain way that sort of limits your ability to really critically think and really interpret what's going on around you. And once you lose your voice, once you lose your ability and your willingness to actually stand up for yourself and speak out, then yeah, I don't know what type of society we actually have when people aren't willing to voice their own opinions. It's like, after a while, a lot of people get to the point where they just don't care. You know, they only care about their immediate problems, and if anything else is happening, well, it's, well, it's something I can do about it, and I just don't care anymore. That's the attitude that a lot of people run into. They just expect corruption in Washington, D.C. They expect to get robbed. They expect to be uh, manipulated, and they just they lose their yeah. self-respect. They don't care anymore, and it's really sad. It is sad, and it's, it's twofold sad. Right, because you have everything you just said there is true. People get conditioned uh, to just expect, yet they still are conditioned to think that there's something wrong with you, Demcad, because you speak out. That's not normal. You're not supposed to do that. That's weird. That that's that's something you shouldn't be doing. And and I, I know that that talk because I, I know that uh, when people say that to you that are in your personal life, and you never told me any stories, but I go, I've had this exact same thing, Charlie. That's weird. That's weird that you go on the internet and and you complain about the government. That's not normal. And I, so you have the twofold thing. One, the same person will sit there and say, it's okay to kill people. It's okay to, to get raped by uh, Wall Street. It's okay to have my government uh, crack down on me with, uh, with brutality and, and drones and the whole nine yards. That's okay. That's normal. But, and, and to stand up and say something about it is abnormal. And it's, it's, such, it's such a flip of the script you know, it, it needs to be the exact opposite. People need to stand up and, and do what you're doing the, in any way they can. It, it doesn't have to be on YouTube. It could be writing whatever. Anything, uh, they need to stand up and say, I've had it. I've absolutely had it. If 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 uh, 3% of this nation did that, guess what? We'd have, we'd be, have a whole different company or country. We'll be back with uh, Reginald, also known as Dimcat, from YouTube. We'll be right back. Guys, welcome back to Wide Awake News Radio. Final segment of this first hour, we have uh, Reginald, also known as uh, uh, Dimcad, joining us uh, for this first hour. Coming up in the second hour, a gentleman I've never spoke to, Judge, uh, I'm going I'm to butcher your name, Judge, Nad Nadu. I, 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 don't, I hope I'm saying it right, Nadu. Um, he's going to come on and talk about your freedom and talk about uh, taking that freedom back, especially in the, in the field of uh, foreclosure. It's going to be a very interesting program, so hang out uh, after this first segment. Reg, those watch, listening on Justin TV, you, you saw me turn red. You saw me get mad. You, it's a topic that, that I hardly can talk about uh, on video. And if, if I go on RT or something like that and I go there, I, inevitably I get red, I get mad, and um, I, I really try to control this because I'm old <laughs> and I don't want to have a heart attack. Uh, and uh, it's the topic of fake, phony ignorant, stupid comments and, and attitudes towards butchering and killing people around this world. It absolutely is the one thing that I have a difficult time maintaining uh, professionalism on any level when, when it digresses to rah, 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 let's kill them. Because uh, it's uh, on so many levels, it's anti-American Right, inalienable rights. All men are created equal. It doesn't mean you're an American. It is created equal. All human beings have the right to pursue happiness, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And some ignoramus just wants to come out and talk about we should kill them and move on. It it, it is so obtuse. It is so shallow, and it's so uh, uh, just completely moronical that I want to literally leave my chair uh, when we when I get into this debate with somebody. Namely, and I'll leave it at this and then kick it to Reg to, to comment on this. Namely, because not, not me. I, I've been there, right? I, I was in the first Gulf War. I've seen the dead. I've seen what happens when you, you, the actions of government are unleashed to its fullest extent. You know, it, it's horrific. I don't want anybody to go through that. But I'm worried about 
the people, the kids that we're killing tomorrow. And I'm not talking about just the folks in Afghanistan or Iraq and around the world, the nationals who've got done absolutely nothing except wake up and be born in, 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 on the wrong continent, and they're going to have a Hellfire missile be, make them one of the 30 dead in order to achieve a kill on a high-value target. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the kid next door, the kid living in your, under your own house, the kid living down the street. I'm talking about the kid who's going to be victim of a world that hates him because of the actions of corrupt government. This is, uh, this is what it just stokes me to the point of uh, yeah, red-faced, uh, Reginald. And when the, if the U.S. Dollar, dollar loses its world reserve currency status, and this country suffers the type of economic collapse that I think we're likely to suffer, we're going to get a lot of that blowback, as a lot of the agencies refer to it. Oh, blowback. You know, it, it's revenge. Okay, we've been murdering people across the world with no good reason, simply because politicians are controlled by corporate interests who don't give a damn about this country, which is why they don't want to bring jobs to this country, which is why they're always going to third world countries with their slave shops and having all the goods made in places like China or whatever. They don't care about us, but they have the influence here. They buy off the politicians, and then they're able to get these wars started so they can open up more markets and That's make right. more money. That's what it comes down to. And they sell us a Go USA and we got to kill them all. Crap. You think these people give a damn about you? Have you been to the store recently? Do you see made in USA made anywhere? You honestly think these corporations give a damn about you? USA. USA. Idiot. They're sending people to war. They're sending our soldiers there. They are going to get killed and hurt. A lot of people are going to have their lives turned upside down. Some of them even ruined. Just so they can make money. That's what it comes down to. It's about the money. They don't care about you. The politicians that you want to cheer for, oh, go, yes, we can, and oh, mommy, he's going to do this, and oh, this guy's going to do this. They don't care about you, dude. They're pathological liars who don't care about you. They're bought and paid for by corporate banker interest. They don't care about you, okay? You can cheerlead all they want, all you want, but you know what? Your, their, your interest will not be represented in Washington, D.C., it never has and it never will. It will not change. But you're gonna, it's still going to be okay because you're going to feel happy about it. You know, your standard of living is going to go down, but you're going to be happy about it. Your debt is going to go up, but you're going to be happy about it. Your kids are going to be in more debt, even before they're even born, but you're going to be happy about it. Your credit card debt, up. Student loan debt, up. National debt, up. Liabilities for Social Security and everything else, up. Because, oh, well, well you know, it's going to stole money from uh, parts of Social Security and here and here and so they can fund all this crap. But hey, it's okay because, you know, uh, your favorite TV shows on and, you know, the water's still on. You can still get on the internet, internet and play around and hip, hip, hooray. They don't give a damn. But you know what? If you don't give a damn, they don't give a damn about you. And one of these days, the consequences are going to come and you're going to have to deal with it. And you know what? When your life is rocked upside down, when you find yourself destitute, you're going to say, why did this happen? And you want to know what? You want to know what the answer is going to be? Because you didn't give a damn. That's the best Reginald rant I've ever heard. I've heard a lot of them, and that is absolutely the best. No doubt, 100%. Uh, you don't give a damn, then, and when the, when the, and the proverbial... Can I get an amen? Roost, what's that, Gary? What was that? <laughs> was that you, Reg? Yeah, Gary, man, that, was, that was Gary. <laughs> Gary's involved now. Everybody's mad. Everybody's mad. Uh, and, but you know what? It is It is a subject that if, if it doesn't get your blood pressure up, man, check your pulse. Check your pulse. Because, uh, you know, that, look, what you and I just did there, that is a result of, 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 of doing what we do on YouTube as a passion, not a job. We don't do this as a job. This is a passion. And, and exposing ourselves to that reality, inevitably. I, uh, Reggie's a black man in Michigan. I'm a white man in Montana. We have this in common. This. And we are at the exact same place. Exact same place. Because truth, truth inevitably, inevitably is going to bring you to this. That you're being lied to. You're being butchered. You're butchering people. You, literally, are butchering people because it's happening in your name. 
And we collectively, as a nation, as a planet, are going to pay the price for this hubris greed, period. And it's inevitable. It's inevitable if you expose yourself to that truth, if you uh, strive to know the truth, this is the position you will get at. Any true uh, uh, individual that, that is motivated by, uh, uh, by love of country and love of humanity that I have met in this journey is right here in the exact same spot. Not, and I don't care what they call themselves. If they call themselves a, a communist, a socialist, a capitalist, a whatever, this is where you get when you realize that, that barbarism is happening uh, for profit in your name, period. Reg? Absolutely. And, you know, so they think it won't affect them. They think it's not going to come back to them. That's what it comes down to. People think, oh, we can bomb them. We can bomb this. It's not going to affect me. We can increase a debt here and be reckless here and do this and not really give a damn. It's, it's, it's going to, the party is going to continue. It's not going to affect me. The same phenomenon in place where, you know, in, in New Orleans, they said, you know, you know, th this levy system is not up to par. We got to do something. You know, you have the local local government, you have the state government, you have the army corps engineers, a lot of organizations involved. Uh, there's some money available, but, you know, it's not really a high priority because ultimately, unless there's a disaster, people don't feel a need to actually do something about it. People feel like, well, it's not going to happen to me. It's not going to happen to me. If, if that's what people think in their head, it's not going to happen to me. It happens to other people. It, 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 there's not going to be any consequences for me. But of course, when they deal with the consequences, then they say, oh well, how do we prevent this from ever happening again? That's right. <laughs> and and it's that. That's it. It it is Gary. I hope my sounds okay because I tried to back off and, and turn it down when I knew I was going to go crazy there. But. Um, it, it, it is inevitable that, and trying to bring it down for the last two minutes here, uh, that that uh, uh, the the crisis of reality, when it hits, um, it, it'll be uh, the ignorant that suffer the most. It'll be the ones who are living in a fantasy that their nation uh, is, stands for good, and their nation stand. You know, the people of this nation are good. The people, the policy of it is not. The people of it have given hundreds of dollars for a cause to somebody they'll never know during the broadcast of this program tonight. The people are good. The the policy and the governance is uh, is betraying the the goodness of these people, the goodness of the people of this land. Reg, uh, two minutes to go. Tell us what's going on in your world. Uh, last time I uh, let's uh, let's end it on a, an up note. I hope things oh, are going well. Helping out friends right now, a lot of yard work and uh, working on an automobile. Automobile probably going to end up getting a K five Blazer. Just doing little things like nice. this. Nice. Uh, Wait a minute, K five. That's a eighty. So I, don't know which one. I don't know. It's going to be either from eighty two or eighty one to ninety one. Now from eighty seven to ninety one, they came with a TBI. It's supposed to be a sort of a really simple. Uh, fuel injection, which is yeah. acceptable to me. Auto fuel injection. I, I'm, I'm very familiar with it. I'm uh, familiar with the K5. I used to own one. Uh, 350, good oh. engine, easy to work on. Big. Exactly. I mean, there's there's enough room, unlike a van where everything is cramped up and you can't really move your elbow. I want something with some space, good, reliable engine, something that somebody else would know how to work on. I can actually learn something about it. Yeah. A 350, you know, I guess you could put a 454 there, but I'm going to stick with a 350. Just yeah. keep things simple for me. Look at that small block. It's easy to work on, plenty of room in there, easy to get parts. Uh, a 327, 350 in a Chevy is, you know, they're, they're a 100,000 mile engine, uh, but they're simple to work on and, and get, uh, uh, get done what you need to get done. You know, and, and you get into that year car, Right, that year of a blazer, you can still work on it. Uh, you get uh, much older or much newer than that, rather. Forget about it. You, you know, you, you're not going to. Uh, you don't have the. I, I'm good with engines. I built cars in my throughout my life, and I couldn't work on my the car I drive now because it's, it's a computer. computers. It's the computers, and you got now, and now you have to have sensors for everything for the damn yeah. computers to, the, to to detect what's going bad, what's going on here. You know, yeah, they say it's a little bit more efficient, but you're paying a lot more money yeah, because of all these damn sensors and the computers and the computer brakes are going to pay for that, too. And worst yeah. of all, now you don't even know how to fix it because now you're dealing with computers for five hours. There's, there's a turnaround there. I said one thing about technology and cars of today. There is a turn, there is a trade off there. You're never going to get, you're never going to get 300, 400,000 miles uh, like you will with like a Subaru Outback. You're mm. never going to get that with your K5. You're going to rebuild that thing three times, but you got a tank. 
So, <laughs> so and you just thought. keep doing. Yeah, and you can do it. You can do it. So. You're just out of luck. What are you gonna do? You're gonna walk. <laughs> mechanic or something. You're gonna spend a thousand dollars to get the, to get a check and and uh, and to get a new sensor. Reginald, <laughs> also known as Dim Cat from YouTube, uh, great great program uh, tonight, and I'm glad uh, that the, this is the last uh, program we're gonna have you on in this new format. Uh, way to uh, come on here and uh, knock it out of the park. Always uh, entertaining, always, more importantly, informative. Uh, Dimcad on YouTube. If you're not a subscriber, get over there and do it now. Uh, Reg, thank you very much. We'll get you on the new format uh, when we get rolling. All right. Thank you. All right. Good night. You have a good night. Guys, stay tuned. We're going to be back in just a minute.